Hi, it's Dr. Noel Robert Williams, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, Optimal Health Associates, April 23rd, 2020, COVID update. Uh, just some statistics, world statistics, uh, 2.71 million, up about 50,000 now every day. Um, I think 188,000 deaths, maybe, I can't remember. Um, the numbers blur, as I always say at this point. Uh, the United States, about 870,000 cases, uh, 50,000 deaths um, that are recorded. And just always keep in mind, everything's a little fluid with the death numbers, but it's probably a lot more than that. Anyone who argues, well, they're throwing all these people in who shouldn't be, isn't understanding how most of the deaths are truly recorded, at least in most states where there's people who actually are trying to be honest about it. Um, Oklahoma, we're almost 3,100 cases, and we have about 190 deaths, I believe. Um, so we're going up steadily. Uh, so kind of is what we're expecting, a very solid uh, number of cases every day across the world. There isn't right now anywhere where it's surging up particularly much. Um, everyone's kind of at steady state um, with the death rates. We're not expecting that to change for at least another month. Um, we'll definitely hit somewhere above 70,000 now. I don't see how we couldn't, but um, we'll be optimistic. Uh, Oklahoma update. Uh, we continue to enjoy the, the synchrony between Governor Stitt, who made the national news today, um, trying to displace Governor Com uh, Kemp from Georgia as the most incompetent governor um, for going against, it was a little story or a national news story that uh, with a headline of Governor Stitt of Oklahoma goes against doctors and um, Democrats. I don't think they needed to put the Democrats. I think they just needed to say they go. He went against every single health care person, essentially, in the state and also didn't involve any of the mayors in the entire state in his decision making. So he's ruling like he's uh, he's an autocrat, like he's he's the Duke of Oklahoma, which is particularly humorous um, to me because that's uh, so non-Republican, really so and conservative and libertarian but that's how he's doing it he has not enlisted anyone's opinion for any of his major decisions um, when it comes to this either with local mayors uh, at big with big cities or smaller cities nor any of the health care uh, experts in the state uh, he's ignored all his advice from the state health department and because of that their rules which i talked about last night um, made it really hard to do emergency surgeries all of a sudden. And so I actually had an emergency surgery today, and um, which is only the second one I've had to do, but it was a real emergency with a lady with the acute abdominal pain and a pelvic mass that we, we thought the ovary was tw twisted. And, and she was having 10 out of 10 pain after having 20 out of 10 pain um, in the ER. Um, and so we needed to move expeditiously with getting her operated on today. And so the whole question came up about the COVID testing, because by the state health department rules, we had to have a COVID test, which both our hospital administrator, our chief medical officer in our facility, and I all agreed is, yeah, that would be really nice, but it's an emergency. Are we going to not do the surgery, whether we can get the COVID test or not back? So we proceeded. And, and just so this, anyone from the Oklahoma Health department here, we actually got the test back as we were rolling the patient into the OR. But that was because we have a great um, CEO in Debbie Kearns who has a system, but 99% of facilities couldn't have gotten the turnaround time on the COVID results in time for, that, for the patient. Um, and it just illustrates that when the state health department is, and it is not in sync with the governor, or more importantly, the governor is not in sync with anyone who has expertise in a matter then um, we can get into trouble. So it, we're failing here in Oklahoma pretty significantly, but that's it, how it is. We are gonna open the state up uh, in the next week, a little bit more in theory tomorrow, and then much more in a week and then in another week, probably. But again, the mayors are saying, no, we can't. And the governor's saying, yes, we are. And that just shows excellent government efficiency when the governor won't meet with the mayors or talk to them or have any discussions with those people who actually have to do things, but just does it on his own. So that's how life is. On a national level, just the only report is the, uh, again, um, sheltering in place is still being encouraged by a lot of the 
um, federal government officials and maybe a slowdown on releasing things, which is a good plan. And again, I'm for getting things back to normal as rapidly as possible. And I'm going to, and it's one, the economy, and two, the uh, people's lifestyles in terms of all the people who need to get to work and make some money so they can pay for stuff is the money they've gotten from the federal government if they did get some runs out. But the important thing about this, and this is the concept to stay with, we're in a stabilization phase and we're going to go briefly into a recovery phase, but then we're going to go right back into this whole cycle, I'm pretty convinced, because there's more and more studies on the variation of the of the COVID-19. I read another paper, which I'll post um, this evening, um, that went through about uh, a large series of COVID uh, samples, and there was 120 different genetic variants. And let's talk about antigenicity and what that means. So imagine you have a virus and there's proteins on the virus. So think, let's make the virus a pizza, a cheese pizza, and there's pepperoni on the pizza. The pepperoni are proteins. And that's what your body recognizes immunologically. But the thing that happens is you want to have a pepperoni that's the same on every kind of a virus or on that total species of virus. You could have different kinds of cheese that don't matter. If you have different crusts, you could have different types of tomato sauces. But as long as there's that one pepperoni and it's always the same, an antibody can bind to it and inactivate the virus if that protein's in the right spot. So the problem with antigens is they can vary, and if the antigens vary on the crust, who cares, but if they vary on the pepperoni, let's say you had a pepperoni with more chilies in it, chili powder or something, that antigen would be different. And that's what we're seeing with the COVID-19. First, there was a paper showing that there were 30 different variants on the protein stem or the the protein finger that comes out and grabs stuff. And that was devastating news, I think, uh, in terms of immunity. And then this paper today shows that um, there's 120 variants that they've seen in this one case series, some of which are important, some of which are probably not important. So again, it's pointing to this virus is a monster in terms of genetics and pathophysiology. So the solution is not going to most likely be an antibody or a vaccine, it's gonna be immunology, meaning you have your immune system revved up. And so that segues into the next paper. So this is a great paper for everyone with children. It was a, a paper from China that looked at about 75, 77,000 actually patients and looked at all the children who were positive and were infected and, then, and they got sick. And the number one thing in this study that sh it showed that around 150 kids that they documented had COVID and got infected and were various levels of symptoms, they all lived. And so that's very consistent data that yes, we've had a few children die in the United States. They had a couple, I think two total from all the reports I've seen in China. It, it is an extraordinarily little number get infected relative to adults and an extraordinarily small amount actually get sick. And again, it's because of this whole, the theory is the human growth hormone and the melatonin. And the melatonin uh, that little kids have, which is again, what I want adults to take, um, is very protective from getting super inflamed. But the thing they notice with these kids, and this is what is, I think, the take home message from this study, is the kids who got sick, they did a ton of stuff for them. They gave them big time drugs. They actually backfired and made them worse giving lots and lots of drugs. So when there's the big pharma solution, which is the way the FDA is going, and the guy who got switched from um, running the section on this at the NIH by uh, Trump yesterday, that's what he's about. Let's give the biggest drug we can to every person because it's big pharma and it's FDA approved. And even if it's not FDA approved, let's give it to them. Well, that backfired with these kids. So what did they end up seeing? There was one thing out of all the meds they gave that helped the kids. And it was a shot of alpha interferon. Alpha interferon is a natural immune modulator in the human body. And so that worked. And so there's some, there's, they can reproduce that and give shots of it. It's very expensive. Turns out, guess what zinc raises, which I've been talking about now for, God, almost three months. Zinc, if you raise your zinc levels to high normal, you're gonna raise your alpha interferon by up to 1,000%. So it gets back to, let's think common sense on this. Let's not get sick. Let's not wait till we're in the intensive care unit and need all this stuff thrown at us and then it's not gonna work or it's gonna kill us because of side effects. 
Let's do our zinc so we get our alpha interferon up. Let's do our vitamin D. Let's do a really strong multi. And let's get our immune system and all our immune modulators that can fight off viruses and bacteria for us working. That is the solution to normalizing the country. It is the solution for stabilization. It's how we're going to get through the second, third, and fourth waves. And this is going to be a long, ongoing process. That's what we need to do. And it's just amazing to me and will be completely continual that the FDA and the NIH are going to literally go out of business before they'd ever recommend. <laughs> hey, Titan, the pug's here. Uh, would ever recommend something simple and, and natural that actually works in scientific studies. But you know what can we do? We can ignore the FDA and we can ignore the people who don't have our best interests at heart and really just want to facilitate their own agendas, which is not what I'm about. So masks I think are helpful. Wash your hands a ton. Take your supplements. It matters. My final little note is I had a uh, former patient who's also a friend called me today um, who got COVID-19. She was on the supplements we recommended and she did not know she got COVID. She was worried she got COVID, um, and, but she got through it. She had a high fever, 102, 102 and a half, was sick for about two to three weeks. She eventually got tested after having negative flu tests and 15 days later, she got her results. By then she was better. That shows you how great the testing is once again in Oklahoma. Um, but the interesting thing she wanted me to know and wanted to share is how great the care is in Oklahoma and some of the things that they're doing. And so she got called about a week and a half ago because there was a sick patient at one of the big hospitals, and I'm not sure if it was OU or Saints or Mercy or, or uh, Integris, but um, and they wanted to get antibodies from a patient who'd been inf infected. And so uh, OBI, Oklahoma Blood Institute, coordinated with her, brought her in, because they knew she was positive. They drew her blood, she was a match, and they then drew her plasma and got the, her antibodies out and gave it to the patient. And she believes the patient has done well, she's gonna get an update. But it just illustrates that these intensivists and the doctors who actually make the decisions and the administrators who make the decisions, because the doctor who said, I think I wanna do this, has to go to the ethics board quickly, the administrator has to approve. The people who are actually doing the care and running the care are doing everything they can for the patient. So should, we should feel comfortable. It would be nice if the governor and the health department actually communicated with those same people instead of just making whimsical and arbitrary decisions for their own ends. Um, and again, I understand the health department is trying to protect people because they're having frustrations with the governor, but they, their plan isn't really that helpful to us. So anyway, uh, just another good story though about Oklahoma ingenuity, people doing their best um, and trying to do everything humanly possible for these patients. So that's the summary tonight. Have a wonderful evening. It's beautiful out and have a great weekend.